All right, guys, so welcome back, and it's day two of my Happy Valley, Pennsylvania adventure with my good buddy, Juan. Juan, set the table for where we are, what we're doing, and what the game plan is for today. Basically today, Chad, we are here at Fly Fisherman's Paradise, which to my knowledge was the first fly fishing only project in the United States. We're going to do some nymph fishing today because uh, we didn't see any hatches right now. Obviously it's in the morning. Uh, it's a little bit colder than usual for this time of year. And so we're gonna, once again, do some uh, tight line nymphing and head up to some pools and see if we can uh, catch some brown trout today. So a Southern boy come up here to fish and it's a little bit colder than normal. So we sat at the coffee shop for about an hour to let it warm up a little bit and I still got a beanie on or a toque or a skull cap or whatever you call it. I had to break out the down jacket today too, <laughs> man. This is crazy. So anyway, <laughs> the hat should be on this evening, this afternoon, but right now we're gonna go do this, uh, this nymphing thing and see if we can't find a big old brown. Here we go. All right, Juan, so we made it to the river. We waded across. Now break down exactly what we're gonna be doing here. Sure, Chad. Basically, I'm looking at this pool. We've got a rift here, and then it drops off actually pretty quickly into deeper water, and then it flows down. And at the end of the pool, it starts to taper up. There are two sections that I, you know, there are three sections here, the taper up section, the middle section that's the deepest section, and then the, the, the uh, place where it's gonna tapering down from the, the riffle here. Usually what I like to do is start at the taper up right here at the bottom of the pool and fish that a little bit and then fish the middle and then fish the top. So that's kind of how we're gonna proceed here, kind of that rule of thirds kind yeah. of thing. But also across the, the creek is important too. The way I'm breaking down things as they're going across the creek, there's a deep eddy over on the far bank We've got actually a, a, not a strong current, but a good current going down in the middle of the pool. And you can actually see, see that uh, slick there with the bubbles yep. in it, the film. And a lot of times that's where the trout are gonna be because they're gonna feed under that film right there because obviously that's collecting stuff, right? right? It's food and bugs and sticks and everything else. So that's a good area to focus on. And then also there's one thing that a lot of anglers skip by that's really close to us. If you look at this color of the bottom, you see that light kind of sand gravel there? Mm -hmm. And then it start, it gets dark and you can see a distinct dark line along that edge right there. That's actually a, 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 or a depth drop right there. Okay. And so a lot of times those fish will lay along that depth drop right there into the pool. And so that's another area that we're definitely gonna hit first probably. We just kind of run our nymphs along that depth and then, and then kind of move out into some of this other stuff. Yeah, so basically what you're saying is divide the stream into thirds, lower, middle, upper, and then do the same thing crossways. Do the, yeah. you know, this third, middle yeah. third, and, yeah. and a, a yeah. outer third, so. Yeah. Bring it down, baby. Now, let's, uh, let's put a fly in their face. All right, buddy, let's go do this thing. Cool, cool. This is one of the most popular spots to fly fish in Happy Valley, definitely. Um, there's a fantastic population of fish. I don't remember the exact number, like per, you know, creek mile, but it's heavily, you know, it's a dense population of trout. And there's some really nice trout in here. I mean, really nice size, you know, that 12 to 15 inch range. Uh, so it really makes it nice. You can get in here, you know you're fishing over fish. You know, <laughs> you know if you're making a cast, you're probably casting over fish. And, uh, and that you know, brings up the confidence level. And that's, I think, what's important. And then you're just out there trying to figure out what the fish are gonna eat. So I, I really like this um, section, of you know, the fly fishing section of, of uh, Spring Creek. It's, it's a lot of fun. because you know you want to get that angle and you're reaching out a lot more. When you have a longer rod, you can keep your elbow in almost yeah. to your side a oh, little yeah. bit when you're, when you're drifting and it saves your shoulder and your, and your elbow.
Uh, I actually threw a different one. Oh yeah, a little brown trout, nice brown. Good job, man. The student has become the teacher. All righty. Pretty little brown, son. Ooh, come on, dude. Come on, buddy. Come in here. Look at that guy. Man, you want to talk about a pretty fish. Look at those pink spots just lit up and that red on the tail. Golly. Well, guys, there's the first fish of the day. Well, the first target species anyway. We did get a, uh, a little sucker early on. It gave me a little charge. But uh, fish down at the, the rise, the tail end of the pool where the rock was coming up to a little bit shallower spot, swung the fly through there and he ate it. It was fun. Uh, unfortunately, he came off before I could get you guys a really cool slow-mo release. So you know what that means, right? Just means I got to catch another one. I've never lost a big fish on a trip before, and I'm not about ready to start. <laughs> so I've netted every big fish we've ever hooked. For 10, 10 years, man, I haven't lost a big fish that somebody hooked. <sighs> I've never had to feel that pain, man. just try to make a long up angle, upstream angle cast to the top of that. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah. It starts at the bumpy, yep. Nope, you cast right below, right at the shadow almost, and let it drift down through. It's just a small green patch of water there. Because out here you see the yellow rock, I'll call it yellow, yellow rock outlining it, but right there you can't, you can see the bottom, but not as good. And that's a green patch of water, it's the depth change there. And they're just using that depth change to, to hunker down. Don't get too close in the beginning. Stay back. Stay, stay right there, man. Yep, up a little bit higher, about another two feet. Got another brown. This is the second one um, out of a probably a really less than obvious water pocket and on you know spring creek is is pretty pressured i mean we got quite a few anglers out here today but the good news is there are lots of trout and when i'm in really pressured water i focus on less obvious spots let's go ahead and let him on you know Woo! he's gone less obvious spots and that fish actually came from just the top of a funnel between two rocks where i could see a flat that kind of deepened out right before the funnel between two rocks, just a, probably another five or six inches. And that was enough for that fish to be in that really fast water, you know? And so that's one of those areas where, you know, an angler might fish just in front of the rock or just behind the rock and the eddy lines behind the rock, not necessarily paying attention to the top of the funnel between those two rocks, upstream from those two rocks. So anyway, that's a, probably a, a good, I don't know, higher level tip. Um, and when you're fishing pressured water, always try to find that little bit, those pockets of water a little bit off the beaten path that you wouldn't normally fish. And a lot of times that's where the fish are pushed to. This is a faster grade area here. And they're just in a lot of pocket water. We're definitely gonna have to work through this. Let's move up river. <sighs> Another one on sulfur merger. Seems to be a common theme today. Call it the way you see it. There we go. Another one on the sulfur merger. It's probably like 10, 12 inch fish. That's not bad at all. Nice day of fishing out here, Chad. Yeah, we caught quite a few on fly. Dude, I'm fly gonna be honest with you guys. We moved from 
kind of drifting the fly through these deeper pools where I'd kind of gotten the hang of it. And I'll tell you, this is gonna be a recurring theme through this video, and this is part of the reason we're kind of expanding our horizons here and just trying something different for this episode. If you're with somebody that really knows what they're doing, sometimes you can just back up. And so what I did is I just kind of got up on the bank and watched some of the little subtle nuances of things that Juan was doing. And I'm like, oh, okay, I see what he's doing there. And then you go out there and you, you try to duplicate it. If you're standing up and you're trying to fish and watch somebody that knows what they're doing at the same time, uh, you have a hard time really picking up on that. So sometimes if you're fishing with a, another angler that's a really accomplished angler in that discipline, you can just stop and watch in a lot of cases and you'll pick up on those little nuances, those little subtle things that they're doing different than you are and that'll definitely put some fish on the end of your rod. Yeah, I think this is just in this area. I think this is like the fourth fish yeah. I got. Yeah. Plus a couple hookups, so it's not too bad. Let's go ahead and let him go, get him back in the water. He's nice and lively. I like to leave him in the net a little bit just to get him revived. You ready for a release? Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, do me a favor and help support the channel by downloading the Fishing Chaos app now so you can get in on the action.